going on guys, JK Drip Mode, and today I am gonna build a dial, and today's inspiration. So I was going on Pinterest, and just, you know, I tend to like look at a lot of art, look at other dials, and I run into uh, like these medieval dioramas for like board games, right? And I saw like, wow, so much detail involved in those little miniatures, and they're tinier. But this one guy, he did some beautiful like, Roman type of uh, cathedral looking dials and I was really blown away but I was blown away with the detail. I found in the web that, that there's people that build dials and their way of going about that detail is that they cut out the actual stones or the actual bricks and then they lay out one by one like as, as how you would do it in real life. You know, putting the slabs of concrete, the slabs of marble, the slabs of whatever it is, one by one. Normally when I do a dial and it has brick, I carve it just to make my life easier and then add the details. But I was noticing that I couldn't accomplish myself. I couldn't accomplish this crazy detail of it being random. It was real, it's real beautiful and I haven't built the dial that way. So I, that's, that's my, that's the reason why I want to uh, focus on today's dial is I want to always try to step out of the box. And I don't know if you guys noticed, if you guys watch all my videos, they're not consistent. You know, they're not like, oh, like street, street, streets. Like I, I always branch off. I always jump around when it comes to the theme of my dials. So with this particular dial, this is me stepping out of my comfort zone and learning, learning. The whole point of this is that you want to learn from the previous build. And hopefully you can see an evolution of your own craft getting better and better and better. So that's the whole point for today's dial. But now, with that being said, because it's like a Greek mythology build, and the first thing that popped in my head was Fist of the North Star. Now, Fist of the North Star, uh, this collection here, is uh, an apocalypse, uh, Mad Max type of category. Um, and But there is... Uh, buildings in that in that story that are real colonial of like Washington type of building where they have that that influence. This is the series that I collect with Fist of the North Star. This is the X199, this is the X200, and this is the Revolution. The, they're, these two are the same company. This is kind of like a figure arts, Figma type of company. Uh, it has more articulation. The material is a little bit more like Storm Collectible where it's like a rubber material. More articulation. Um, but uh, this model, you can tell this one is very plastic. You know, this is a typical like 90s type of toy but then like, this is kind of say like late 90s early 2000 the sculpture has evolved and as you can see it's really beautiful as well so and the size are different but whatever so i have a huge collection and i don't have any dial for it and i think that this is a great opportunity for me to build a dial for this collection so let's get to it all right so what i'm doing is i'm getting corrugated cardboard right so what I'm doing is that I'm dividing it into three and those three will be each of them will be a pillar all right so there we go now we just gotta basically just glue them like so all right guys so look how many I made I made a lot um now I'm not gonna start making them complete because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give them each a base right well, not. All right, so these are one of the stairs, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna glue everything down, and then I'm gonna sand it down. So. Normally I really don't like using the styrofoam and I just need to just suck it up. I'm just not a fan of the material. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, uh, you have to be careful with this foam. You have to treat it well. I just created the side, the side panels for the dial that's giving this ramp for the stairs, but it's also covering the side. So I'm just gonna use the white because it's thin and I don't have to worry about car carving thin slot. So 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna magnetize these pieces to the side. So they'll be the side lids of the, of the build. I'm building the base for the columns and um it's pretty quick <laughs> so I'm gonna start pasting the blocks to the pillars so that we could have a whole bunch of these so, did a couple of them already this turned out pretty good Right, so the next part is I'm basically starting to add the magnets for the roof um, to the pillars. So now I just put them on. Boom. Cut out the other one. Hmm. fill it up with glue and then when I paint it it's gonna all blend in really nice <clears throat> I really want to take it to another level so I'm taking it I'm trying new things here so here I'm playing with a rock and I'm pressing so that the rock will start getting those indents from a real natural pattern from this stone I'm also trying this other one this one's a little sharper. But let's see. stuff I'm here mixing glue water and rocks so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna have it where I could just basically paint these rocks or just lay them anywhere on the dial and they should stick put the mixture in areas that I think um, the rocks need to be so I need just need to do now is let it dry and once yeah, it is, so now we're gonna start with the priming. So I'm using gesso, right? Jelly one, you know, doesn't matter. I'm gonna use some black and I'm gonna mix it in so I can make my I'm gonna do is basically a black gesso. Alright guys, day four and the priming is done. Uh, it's dried up and everything, so it's time to now start coloring and painting and all the good stuff. So my direction is going to go concrete with, you know, sand. So it's going to be whites and browns and beiges. Now that I have dry brushed the whole thing, the next thing I'm gonna focus on is a black wash. Now, this is a technique that I do is I first do dry brush, let it dry, then do then do a um a black wash, see how it how it reacts, and then do another another 
dry brush and keep going back and forth until you get the texture that you want and then once you're good seal it and you're good so let's do this See that? It looks like stone. <laughs> Pretty freaking dope, right? See, so like from the dry brushing that I did underneath, it's giving it interesting, interesting details. So again, like I said, layers. Layers are very important to get this type of detail. Look at that shit looks so real. Ugh. Pretty badass. <laughs> now to add another layer to this is now I'm gonna start adding some browns. So I'm gonna airbrush them. So I'm gonna put them in certain areas just to, you know, bring out that character that is. Now we're gonna go into some dry brushing and what I'm planning to do is just kind of give the edges of the concrete you know some highlights oh look at that yep i think i'm gonna go with the white all right now i'm gonna just start randomly Adding some of these little grass. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna. It's too green, so I'm gonna probably spray paint it with a little bit of brown. To make through the crack of the, of the concrete slab. So, yeah. Alrighty, next up, I think I'm gonna play with some ribbon. Look at this ribbon right here. Looks very fancy, looks very royal. Like royalty, right? <clears throat> so this was what I'm kind of playing with right now. I'm playing with the idea of putting some of these ribbons here and alongside here, kind of like a drape, and see how it comes out. Da -da -da -da. it's done all right guys so the first thing i'm getting with this lighting with all this going on i don't know why i'm thinking of like a michelangelo painting or some renaissance painting it's giving me that feel with the colors and just so much going on it's giving me that cathedral like painting i don't know why i'm that's the that's what i'm getting but um, I want to. I really want to showcase everything, showcase everything inside. So I'm gonna take all the characters. All right, guys, here it is. It's done. It's complete. Uh, I feel like I did a mashup of a couple of things here. Uh, got like a definitely like a end of the world feel, but I also kind of feel like more of a. 
of a uh, medieval. Uh, I think I think I nailed it. I think I pretty much nailed it. Now adding the red was a last minute decision. I you know without it it was it's still dope. It's just I feel like it needed a, a contrast. It needed something to like give it some balance. And then so I added the red on the sides. You know, as kind of like a royalty type of like entrance to meet the king. You know, and then this this chair is actually from uh, uh, Pale Man uh, from the Pan Labyrinth. So I used it and it came out really nice. Look at that. Really cool. So yeah, I mean, I'm loving it. It's a pretty big dial though. Well, it was, it's actually very easy to build. It's not really a heavy. <laughs> Yeah, this is actually is is actually a lot. Um, look at my hands. So it's actually a lot. Of so this is the back. All right. But I'm gonna start off with the base. <coughs> okay, there's the base. Start off with the wall. Okay. That's the little wall. And the stairs. So the side panels are very important. These will connect. Okay. And then I got the stage or yeah, the stage. Right. The same uh, look and feel. I could do that, right? The top base where the columns go, you know, as you can see right here, I magnetize, you know, magnetize the columns to the, the I guess, the base. Okay, there you go. So, there's the so there you go guys. So this is a, a dial for my Festival of the North Star, influenced by, you know, Armageddon, uh, Greek mythology, you know, a little bit of like Renaissance, all in one. And here, here it is and I think it came out really dope. Guys, give me your opinion. What do you think of this build? Um, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm loving it. Um, but yeah guys, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Please write a comment, hit that like button, and please subscribe. Peace.